We're doing a podcast. We're doing a podcast. Get off the loo. Get off, man. Get off your shoes. Take them right off. And don't go for a poo. Dude, I'll kill you. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to listen up to me and Sean talk about fish, all right? Do it, bitch. The, the, the Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. Woo! Woo! Welcome to the Funky Podcast. My name is Kieran. And my name is Sean. Sean, how are you today? You know, uh, pretty good. Quite good. Quite good. How are you? Well, not too bad. Um, things are okay. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I want to say it's been a while, but it hasn't been too long. Right? Um, the gap between the last one we did and the one before that was longer. At least yeah. like the ones we uploaded anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're back in college and we're doing our own kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, it's been good. Um, so you've been good, yeah. I have been good. I have That's been good, good. and uh, good. I hope uh, you have been as well. I have been. Lovely. So, Sean, I have a question. Go on. What are we going to talk about today? Today, we are going to talk about film trailers. Film trailers. Film trailers. Not regular trailers, no. No, that's that's for a separate video where we go over our favorites and, you know, good prices on the market and everything. But, you know, for now, we're on something different. Yeah. Film trailers. Okay. Um, yeah, I suppose I'll have a look at uh, some uh, right now and mm -hmm. we'll go ahead with that. Yeah, so one thing we want to talk about uh, specifically in regards to them first up is uh, misleading trailers. Misleading trailers, yes. Misleading trailers, yeah. Uh, Self-explanatory concept, I think. A trailer that makes a film out to be one thing when it is, in fact, another thing. Okay, so our first one up is... Um, are you familiar with Internal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? I am, and this is one of the first ones that comes to mind when I hear about uh, the topic, yeah. It's on a par with a night of heavy drinking. Nothing you'll miss. Okay, so what were your thoughts on that, Sean? Yeah, no, okay, so it's like, it, it technically, like, it technically tells you, like, what the plot of it is, but it's like, yeah. it gives you the completely, like, wrong tone. Yeah, for what it, it gives actually ends a up completely being. different tone to what the actual movie is, and it's, isn't it a bit weird how you know the context of some of the scenes, mm. and that happy music is playing? Yeah. And you can just, like, sense the fear and, like, you know, the, on, on the edge of your seat -ness of that. Hmm. And it shows how much music can really change uh, the mood of something. Um, yeah, like, uh, like, I almost feel like it's so, like, at odds with what the film's about. Like, it almost, like, I feel like maybe it's almost intentional. I guess so, yeah, especially with the guy at the start. It's very kind of hmm. uh, Wes Anderson type where uh, he has like a guy kind of explaining something and it's very kind of meta. Maybe that hmm. could have been their idea of what yeah. they were going to go through. Yeah, so. like maybe it was like actually like intentional, like to uh, like an intentional bait and switch because, you know, it's like. I don't know the idea of like uh, no like masking off like your pain and everything is like a big like theme in the movie anyway. So it's like I, I feel like if it's not intentional, then it's like kind of 
it's it very strange anyway yeah very very strange uh do you have any other thoughts on that particular one uh i mean it's a good trailer tech i mean i would say like i think like yeah uh, yeah it's okay yeah uh, I mean, it's not my favorite trailer in the mm. world. At all. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. But it's like uh, in yeah. isolation, I think like it works. At, like trying to sell the movie, it's just yeah. you know. Um, when I, I guess actually... like they didn't really want to give it away as well of what's actually True. happening. Uh, you know, and Jim Carrey's a very uh, comedic actor, mm. so they didn't want to, I suppose, ruin that sort of vibe. That mm. you know. Yeah, like even like Truman Show before this was like still like still fairly, pretty much a comedy fairly comedic yeah. yeah i'd say like comedy drama uh but definitely like uh yeah this one yeah yeah definitely like not to the same extent of eternal sunshine yeah um but yeah no very uh yeah uh, like i said one of the main examples when like someone brings up misleading trailers is is that one that yeah. always comes to mind okay uh we're gonna go on to our next one i suppose mm-hmm uh What are you doing? That's impossible. Completely not the movie at all. Yeah, like, the most notable one is like, again, going by tone, it's like, that's very much not what like, the film is like. That's not what the film feels like at all. No. Like, even like, uh, even in like, the supposed like, more like, quote unquote, happy parts of the movie, like, it's definitely like, not that like, no chipper or like uh it's, it's whimsical not, necessarily that's not, the movie. that's not it's like yeah. a completely different film. like it's a lot more like emotional and like me- melancholy like throughout most of it and um the, the other notable thing as well is like they try to play it off like it's a fantasy movie which yeah. like obviously for marketing reasons you would but again like that's no you would, like it's an anti-fantasy movie like kind of in I some ways it, like, like it's it's literally like children living in poverty and stuff like yeah. they they should have like not had like the fantasy sequences in it at all i don't think oh, i don't think they I shouldn't think. have done that i think that should have been a surprise for the movie hmm. um i think they should have focused on the friendship aspects hmm. the drama aspects shots of them in school kind of give him the vibe of what the actual story is about rather than trying to lie to your audience that's straight up lying mm. and i think it was done because of the way it was at the time with uh chronicles and Arnia and lord of the rings and mm. all those kind of things i want to say like i was getting like spider wet chronicles vibes on spider chronicles, i forget did, yeah. did spider yeah. come out before it or after it but um, uh, i was getting like it was, similar, a, it was around the same time yeah, around the same yeah. time anyway and i was getting definitely similar vibes yeah of definitely that trailer. very very similar and even vibes. like spider wick as well though is like also like not even like that like upbeat at all <laughs> Like, that's also, like, another film that's, like, got a lot of, like, you know, pretty, like, upsetting shit in as well. But, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which, yeah. Yeah, but th- this one's, uh, like, a lot more darker and a lot more yeah. sort of... Uh, not dark in the sense of mm. uh, cre- creatures, but dark in the sense of things that happen in life. Subject matter. I am so glad I didn't see that trailer before yeah. the movie. I first uh, saw Spiderwick when I was a kid, and like I didn't know anything about it going in, so it's like a lot of it really took me by surprise what it was yeah. actually about. Yeah, I saw it in the cinema over yeah. in England, actually, uh, when I was a kid, so I was very happy. Uh, I didn't know what we were seeing. Uh, I remember specifically about that movie, they played the video game trailer for the before the film. I didn't know there was one. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those like you know yeah. Wii games or whatever. Yeah. My, I don't know if it was. They were everywhere yeah, at the time. I yeah. remember, like, I remember even like a friend of mine like had like a Spider Man Chronicles game on Wii as well, and like, yeah, I remember that actually slapped. So I mean, yeah, I that's know. probably what the trailer was for. Uh, yeah, no, and Rich Terbitia, what what are your thoughts on? Uh, you know, it's it, how do you think the cast or how do you think the people who made the film felt about this? Uh, way of marketing i uh, i feel like because if i mean I, I feel like towards a younger audience especially like what they like showed the movie as is definitely more marketable so like i'm sure they didn't mind that aspect of it but like i feel like like you'd have to feel like the producer the like the higher like missing the point of the movie like i feel i feel like the th- there would be a lot of anger from yeah uh the 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 cast or the 
uh, mm. the crew, especially the director. I would say it was probably very upset with how the trailer came out. Um, like I understand from a marketing standpoint why they approved it, but yeah, yeah, they they shouldn't have. They they should have known that yeah. this film is uh, you know it's it's a special one. It's mm. something that I'm. I think it's a great watch, and you know to kind of market it in this way is. Um, a very misleading one. So, yeah, very very weird. It's kind of imagine if they showed like clips of the Ewoks from Return of the Jedi, and they had like I don't know, sort of uh, fable music playing, and like when you go in the woods or something like that, and then like Return of the Jedi, and then like you know the shot of the Ewoks and stuff. Mm. Uh, and then like you go into the movie and you find out that they're funny in it for a little bit you know it's, it's something like that it's something similar you're not gonna believe this wow and uh, you know all the stars they had in this film as well, uh, like Zoe Deschanel, Robert Patrick, mm. they weren't in this trailer at all. It was only the two kids yeah. and, you know, a lot of uh, I was emotion. like, that much I don't really mind. Yeah, I, I know that, but I think they <laughs> should have shown, like, yeah. you know, the family stuff and, you know, that kind of thing. But, like, what they showed was just, you know, spider Wick again mm. kind of thing. Uh, you know, and it... it you know, it's it's a weird one. It's a really really weird one. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I I think the visual effects look cool. But uh, oh, yeah, so, do, some of it some of it look cool. But yeah, mm. if uh, if I went in with this one, I'd be pretty disappointed. So. Yeah. No. I uh, I I am. I would probably be pretty disappointed too. Yeah. Okay. I have another one. Mm-hmm. To catch the world's most unlikely thief. Bring it on, Queen of the Desert! Kangaroo Jack. Love the jacket, Charlie. Nice. I said a hip hop. The hippie, the hippie did a hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock, do the bang bang. Boogie set up. This is great. Directed by David McNabb. (sighs) Kangaroo fucking Jack. Oh my god. This yeah. is like, I think this is for many of us in Gen Z, a, a shared collective traumatic experience <laughs> when we saw Kangaroo Jack for the first time and we realized we would not be getting a film about a walking, rapping kangaroo without having some like absolute hijinks. There was hijinks, sure, but like it, they, they were, they're not the same. They're just not the same. Believe it or not, Sean, I haven't watched Kangaroo Jack. I mean, honestly, like, you know, it doesn't live up to the trailer anyway. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I've only seen bits of it. I know Christopher mm. Walken is in it, and there's, like, uh, drug stuff going on, and mm. it's a very um, dramatic movie. But is it a bit... It's the Breaking Bad of its day, for sure. Yeah, is it, is it a bit weird, though, that, like, it's called Kangaroo Jack. They have the poster of the kangaroo with the sunglasses. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. A rapping kind of, like I'm thinking yeah this is gonna be like Sonic the Hedgehog mm. you know but with For Kangaroo sure. Jack no it's like yeah it's just like I mean I, uh, I wonder like do they put that scene in the movie just so they could put it in the trailer or what uh, there's a whole big story about it uh, I won't get into it but basically um, it was uh, to do with uh, the audience they had like saw like the talking a- the talking animal thing was a really really big uh, sort of thing so I believe it was like uh, something that they reshot to put into um, the film uh, and then they just thought it'd be a cool way to kind of market it this way so they decided then to put it and as a at the end of the trailer for no apparent reason whatsoever you know yeah no and it's uh it's just it's just so sad like i remember i only found out about this recently and i'm surprised i haven't like heard of this before because like i think this would be you think this would be more talked about with like how much like a meme that movie kind of is now but um this is like me and you at a chance encounter at a cex we saw they had 
Kangaroo Jack, <laughs> Good Day USA, the animated um, sequel to Kangaroo Jack, where he does talk, apparently, in it. Yeah. And I was just like, I mean, I guess they redeem themselves in the end, but it's like, I, it's, again, like, I'm, I'm kind of confused, like, why, like, people don't talk about that more often? Yeah. Relic Infamous, yeah. like, the first is, but it's like, you know, I guess, like, yeah. How, how much can, like, how much can you, re- how much attention can you really expect, like, yeah. Yeah. this type of thing, a straight to DVD, like, sequel like that to get? But yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down to uh, check out Good Day USA at some point. See, does it make up for the uh, disappointment? Yeah, you do that, Sean. Um, yeah, my first exposure to Kangaroo Jack was. Do you remember, in two thousand and two or two thousand three, Andy Serkis got he won an award and uh, he got he was in the studio doing Lord of the Rings, so. Uh, he's like saying from the studio and they actually animated Gollum taking the um, trophy off him and like uh, Gollum and Spiegel are like fighting and they're like fighting with Andy Serkis and uh, like Gollum like swears at him and stuff like that have you ever seen that video? I haven't what the fuck that sounds fire it's a really good video I'll, I'll recommend it to you definitely Jackson, my precious who do you think you are you f***ing hack shame on you Shame on you! Go f*** yourself! No, listen! No, listen! Frankly, nothing can compensate for the long hours of low pay and miserable experience we've had making this f***ing movie! Um, it's a really, really good uh, video. But uh, when they were reading out the nominees, they had, like, clips of the uh, nominees they had. Uh, it was, like, best CG animated character. And it was... Yoda, Yoda. Um, Scooby Doo, uh, Gollum, Lord of the Rings, uh, Gollum one obviously, and Kangaroo Jack. And they had the clip of uh, the him talking. Uh, it was like that love the jacket, Charlie, uh, all right, or something like that. You know that that uh, line that he said. And I remember seeing that as a kid. I'm like, ooh, talking kangaroo. Mm. What is this? And I was like looking it up then and. Found out um, different things, and uh, I just watched the clip, and I just got a bit. It gets a lot weirder. Have you actually seen the bit in the movie, like the, yeah. the clip in? Con- it's it, it's they're a bit like, weird. It's they're a, like gathering around at the end. They're like chanting like "Check in blood, check in blood." It's a bit yeah, a bit unusual. Yeah, bit yeah. Unusual. It's um yeah, uh. Mm. And yeah, just speaking of a marketing standpoint, I think it was definitely a mistake. Um, I mean, like it's hard to say it was objectively. It was hard to say like it was a mistake because like I'm sure like that drove way more people to go see it. But like at the same time, it definitely appealed to kids. But at the same time, it it broke a lot of people's trust. I think. Yeah, definitely. So was it worth it? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Was it worth it? Okay, I have one more. Well, actually. I think I have two. Two. two? Okay, and they're they're actually kind of similar to each other. So, okay, All right. and uh, they're similar to each other in the sense that they're both Disney. So they just can't get my nose right. <sighs> Aha! Ryder! Enjoy prison. I'll miss the sound of your laughter. <sighs> What are your thoughts on that? Okay, wow. Well, so it's like um, I actually hadn't seen that before. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't seen that before. Surprisingly, I haven't because like Daniel's like uh, 
If we're including Pixar, it might not be, but like, if we're just talking like mainline Disney, Tangled's probably my favorite Disney yeah, movie. Yeah, so I'm surprised it's a I haven't very, actually, very good movie. So I'm surprised I haven't seen that. Yeah. And um, yeah, that is, uh, oh, wow, that's like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, the main issue is like, they make it out like it's a Flynn Rider movie first. Yeah. Like, Rapunzel's like, not, like, only like, like, I'd say 80% of it at least is like Flynn and like the other characters. It's like, Rapunzel's not in it that much at all. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, like Mother Gothel, the whole like Mother Gothel thing, relationship with her no, is like nothing. it's alluded to, I guess, technically, with like the grand, like for, like forever, like technically, but it's like no, she's not in it either, and that's like a pretty big thing to omit. Um, I wouldn't say like they made it look like too jokey because like the movie is like already like pretty comedic, but it's like yeah, yeah. If I, the vibe I got was like they were kind of trying to like capture like a Shrek tone almost with the Shrek trailer. Tone. And I, I, like yeah, like yeah. maybe maybe that's just me, but like I feel yeah. like they were kind of like trying to like capture like the same uh, same feeling as Shrek, and I don't yeah. really think like that's an accurate like way to portray. Yeah, the film. I was thinking Shrek, Treasure Planet, mm. uh, kind of outlaw on the run, uh, sort of, um, maybe like a different perspective on the Rapunzel story. I mm. guess that's what they were thinking of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and then like you watch the movie and it's uh completely uh, like obviously like those scenes appear in it, but it's those are when it's his perspective. But the story is uh about her necessarily. Mm. I would say like uh, it's mostly about her. Like the y- mm. it it starts with her backstory and things like that. So it was just uh, it was a wild. Uh, kind of thing yeah no and again it's like you don't even like without Gotham you don't even like see the main conflict of the movie yeah you, like, you, you, like, the, you yeah. don't really know what the plot is yeah uh yeah you, you would think it's just them on the him mm. on the run and then he runs into her and he like sw- sweeps her off her feet I guess and you think that's what the movie is but no mm. it's a uh, I suppose it's like trying to keep away from the spoiler territory and things like that that's fair um but I think the main reason they wanted to do it, and uh, this is what they were talking about, was um, you know they they didn't want uh, another movie. They they didn't think that marketing a movie about a princess to uh, a general audience of you know boys and girls that boys wouldn't go see it. So they were like, which is kind of ridiculous, like because. Uh, mm. Because I feel like if anything, like they alienated the girl audience there, so it's like I uh, know, like did it really like amount to much more yeah, of an yeah, audience exactly. gain from that? Yeah. And like I don't, that's like weird. Like they didn't like think like I mean I guess like this was coming like right after Princess and the Frog. Yeah. So it's weird. Like they weren't as like they didn't have as much faith in a in a in a Princess movie, but it's like I don't know. Like that's still like mainly yeah. like what they're they were known for definitely at the time yeah, like that, i still, still yeah. say to this day to this day like when someone says disney yeah. like you probably mainly think of like the princesses yeah before, like maybe before like mickey mouse and like that's like the most like iconic brand i guess yeah and even like the movie is called tangled and not hmm. rapunzel you know so yeah uh they, they wanted to kind of you know kind of change it uh up a little bit but uh, whatever they did kind of worked anyway because uh, mm. <laughs> the movie uh, did well but yeah, uh, yeah it's it's a definitely a very very different vibe from that trailer mm. uh, would you say it was uh, definitely very misleading uh, yeah I would say so I, I'd say it was very misleading indeed yeah uh, okay I think I in the city of Arendelle it couldn't be warmer it couldn't be sunnier but that's about to change forever Arendelle. It's completely frozen. Cold, 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 You want to talk about a problem? I sell ice for a living. Ooh, that's a rough business to be in right now. I mean, that is really... That's unfortunate. My lady. Whoa, whoa. No. Heads up! It is not nice to throw snow, people! Whoa, 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 feisty pants. Just let the snowman be. I'm calm. Great. Come on. Come on, buddy, faster! No! Hang in there, guys! I can't feel my legs! I can't feel my legs! Those are my legs. Oh, hey, do me a favor, grab my butt! 
Did you um did you notice anybody missing? I'm trying to think now. <laughs> like I mean like Elsa wasn't missing, but like she wasn't in it that much. Yeah, like missing but missing, missing. I guess the trolls? No, no sorry, not missing, but I meant yeah, it was Elsa. So Okay, yeah, Elsa. Yeah, no, um they <laughs> Like the way that make the way that like yeah okay first off like they put like nearly every fucking Olaf scene in that trailer, <laughs> which is like yeah, yeah. I, I guess like yeah I guess like he's like the mascot character quote unquote. Yeah, but it's like, it was like they wanted to market it as this is like tangled. <laughs> I guess so yeah. yeah, but no like Elsa's like does she even have any lines in the trailer? I don't think she no. does. Like no no lines no lines like she's like but that's my sister and then there's like two shots of her. That's yeah. That's just that. Uh, wow. That's like no. That's baffling. And then like you, you look at every single Frozen mm. poster, and it's a picture of Elsa. Yeah, Elsa. I'm not sure yeah. what they were trying to accomplish with that. Were like, it's were like, the princess were they thing again. To, yeah. Were they trying to make her like seem mysterious? I guess, but it's like I don't really think they saw that with the trailer though, because like, there wasn't if they were, if the main goal was like to make her look look mysterious. Like, yeah. A, I don't really think that like really represents her anyway. But like, B, that's. It's yeah. everything's like too like I don't know like comedic to like really like build up any like intrigue like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Again, like they put like mo they like they focus like none on nothing is like really focused on with like the sisterly relationship like beyond the one line. Yeah, one line. Like, yeah. The whole like motivation of the film, it's like they don't even like t they don't, I mean, they don't even like show that's a musical either. I mean, no. to be to be fair, they didn't do a show that with Tangled as well. But, like, yeah. Now typically like they throw like at least like one song in there like let people know it's like um. This isn't, like, necessarily misleading, but, like, I'm also thinking, like, the whole, like, character flashes thing it had during the trailer was, like, oh, the ice guy or the nice guy or the, the snow. And then we're, like, that looked so cheap when they did that. That was, like, <laughs> like, I thought the fact, like, it's, like, even, like, Disney Star is, like, really fucking corny. Like, that look, it looked so cheap. It's, like, Jesus. No, that was, that was, that was not, that was not a good trailer. <laughs> yeah, that, that was their first trailer. Um. I would say if if I was like mm -hmm. if if I was given the task to do a Frozen trailer if I was back in mm. 2012 2013 and they were like okay edit together something I would mainly get like clips of Elsa maybe mm -hmm. like show bits of you know their past and stuff and then like use like kind of maybe lines from parents and use bits of the sisterhood but like show it's actually a fun adventure and kind of market it like properly as it's supposed to be i probably wouldn't show that much of olaf i might have shown uh that guy what's his name christoph yeah I, I would have shown like maybe the clip of him and like the ice thing maybe make him more mysterious hmm. uh yeah like um and that the other guy wasn't in it either the the prince guy the kind of the bit tray guy oh i mean yeah he was in like a little bit but again like you can't really focus really. too much on him with that like i guess without like spoiling anything yeah i guess so but mm. yeah it's a very very weird trailer that yeah that was not good it's like i was like thinking as well like when you said like two disney trailers are coming up like this one came to mind and i'm surprised if you didn't pick that like a lot of people like don't like the trailer for the first like teaser trailer for brave oh yeah yeah like yeah. they definitely make it out like it's gonna be like more like darker like fantasy type movie yeah, um, yeah I do and i remember, remember like that. yeah yeah and i remember like yeah definitely like seeing like the teaser trailer at first and like getting like really hyped for it and then like yeah being yeah. like a, like yeah i feel like it was a little bit misleading for what like okay. brave actually was like i still think like yeah i i think the problem there was um it changed production a lot yeah uh they they had a lot more different things planned and then you know things were kind of shifting around and stuff and then they were like okay let's just i think like mm. some of it was like half directed by someone else or something like that i can't yeah remember. it had like some pretty like mad yeah. production issues but yeah like... overall i i really like brave but the teaser oh, yeah, trailer too. the teaser trailer was fire i'll just say that it was yeah really... no i feel like i feel like like that like I feel like it kind of has a bad reputation, like, in the, like, I mean, less so now, like, I feel like a lot of people came around to it, but it's, like, I feel like that teaser trail, like, set, like, a lot of people's expectations, yeah, like, to one yeah. thing, and when it wasn't that, I think, like, that caused a lot of people, like, really be disappointed, which I don't think it entirely deserved, like, and also, like, watching those two, I'd still say, if, I think the first Brave teaser probably, like, 
still like is a more accurate representation of the movie than like the last two were for theirs honestly <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think what yeah. um they realized maybe i don't know how that trailer did because uh, you know youtube wasn't really big mm. then and uh you know re- reactions and stuff weren't really uh as uh like they were happening but they weren't as they were like you know, a mainstream. niche thing like whereas like in the 2010s they became yeah. huge yeah uh well like uh frozen was 2013 but yeah. still it was uh you know i i don't i don't know yeah, if, i think like, like, frozen were... came out like just around the time like reaction type content was like yeah. becoming like a huge thing yeah it was still like around but it wasn't mm. as big but um i don't know how that trailer originally did or how uh people kind of uh took that but if it wasn't a good reaction like people kind of either not too keen on it i think what really sold the movie is when they released uh the music video for uh, let yeah. it go and that song kind of took off then i think that's what really kind of sold it and people were like okay let's go with this one this looks cool yeah no like because uh i wasn't really paying it i didn't really hear much about the movie before it came out but like i was like a, long, a young kid at the time so it's like it wasn't really keeping up with like pre-release film hype for like most things like unless i saw a trailer for it at the cinema um it, it didn't exist to me until it came out but it's like i can't imagine that really set people's expectations too high yeah i'll tell you right now i was uh in the cinema seeing toy story 3 and i remember that tango trailer playing before that i think yeah um i remember being pretty hyped for it i thought it was kind of cool but uh I thought the the way that the movie was, I thought it was much better in my opinion. I thought like it was like like Tangled there looked like a kind of Shrek type vibe, mm. and then when I saw uh, the actual Tangled, I realized that they had like uh, their own kind of stories to tell and something very special, kind of a a cool take on the Rapunzel story. So mm. it's really interesting, um, you know, especially with like marketing the kids how kind of fair like some of the marketing has to be and things like that so yeah it's it's really it's interesting <laughs> with yeah all this kind of stuff um yeah <laughs> yeah no very <laughs> You're, you haven't seen that trailer before have you that that particular one uh for tangled for the frozen one oh, frozen. As well. no not for i haven't seen that one i don't <laughs> you, you don't seem pleased i, I wasn't. feel like I, <laughs> i've ruined your day like that was like genuinely like bad i think <laughs> like that was actually like a bad trailer <laughs> like never mind like just misleading like i really just i don't think like it didn't make it look good at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, the, um, so another famous one uh, that's misleading is, um, yeah, so, some of the Marvel stuff uh, where they, mm. like, take out, like, spoilers and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, uh, No Way Home and uh, the thing with Hulk and Infinity War. Um, uh, I think Spider-Man is removed from the Civil War uh, lineup to kind of keep his appearance a surprise. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I, I can't think of anything else um like through Marvel I'm sure there's like other stuff um with that particular property but um there was another one that I was thinking of oh yes the film Yesterday the Beatles one yeah and, uh, that's been in uh, some hot water lately yeah I, 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 I got, got taken to court so taken yeah. to court yeah yeah uh, Anna Darmus uh, was in uh, the trailer for a film called Yesterday, um, and uh, people were given out because she's not in it. So mm. yeah, <laughs> didn't even like happen to like years later because like it was like yeah two people like ended up like watching it because like Anna Darmus was in the trailer and then like she wasn't in the movie and like yeah this like this only happened like last year I think which is like it's surprising it took like a few years for that to actually like yeah yeah become a big deal but it's like yeah, yeah. again um. Yeah, then that became, like... Well, I mean, like, it is, like, I think, still, like, a fairly, like, uh, common trend for, like, um... Yeah, certain films, like, we'll get stuff, like, like taking out the trailers, like... I think it's, like, it kind of depends, because sometimes, like, depending on, like, how far along, like, production is when it comes out, like, sometimes, like, generally, like, 
they'll put a scene in a trailer then like later realize they don't want it in the movie anyway yeah 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 and like in cases like that i think it's like more fair enough yeah uh but it's like there's definitely cases like like i think with no way home with them like oh yeah they were just trying to hide uh the appearance of s- those two not you know, even like trying to hide but it's like i almost feel like they were trying to tease it because like there is that one the one like infamous where it's like the whole like lineup of like everyone like fight like it's spider-man like and fighting against like all like all the villains at once and it's like someone kicks lizard but like no one's there on screen and it's oh like, yeah, yeah yeah with how many people like you're probably like meticulously like watching over like the production of like everything that's like yeah everything about this movie like i have a hard time believing like they took that out and like genuinely thought no one would notice like i feel like they banked on the fact people would notice and like it would build up hype yeah yeah um and i guess like yeah similar thing with like spider-man being at uh, like civil war so they could like give him a surprise but um at least like back then but like back then like there wasn't like an expectation he'd like people like weren't like didn't like weren't like actually like looking for in the trailers or anything like because there wouldn't have been any way of knowing but like yeah with no way home it was just like it was so obvious i feel like they had to have like been doing that to like build hype yeah by like leaving like a quote-unquote like mistake like that in there mm. and i like yeah rogue one was another one i think like with rogue one it was to do with like more reshoots yeah though, it was anything. reshoots yeah that there was like some like scenes like uh saw Guerrero. our favorite man forrest whitaker yeah um, oh man like looking at some of the looking at that first teaser mm-hmm. i'm like god i want to see that movie <laughs> i really really want to see it man it's uh yeah it looks really cool and then you know you see rogue one it's like uh okay this is kind of where's some of the mm. thing and especially there's a scene where a tie fighter is like going up and like mm. jen is like on the ramp i was like you know when i saw mm. that in the trailer and then you watch the movie it's not there at all and uh there's like darth vader from behind or something like mm. that and that's not in the movie it's so strange it's it's um you know and t- to be honest it's still a pretty good film but yeah yeah it's stuff like that is a bit um you know ah, whatever um mm. but uh, i think that's the only like star wars trailer that's had anything kind of miss kind of leading or uh, anything like completely changed um yeah i think so i don't think solo had anything uh not not necessarily he had like a yeah. line but uh that line oh, yeah, was just... it was like, a different take or something uh, that they used you know if we want to get into like single lines and there's like hundreds of examples where like a single yeah, line's been like yeah. taken out of a final movie but it's like yeah, yeah um and yeah. yeah i don't think any of the main sequels had that problem no. or like any any prior films actually yeah so no i think that's at, at the very least like none like as big as rogue one anyway yeah yeah that would be right mm. um yeah hmm but yeah no um Yeah, despite that, like, it's, despite that, like, I definitely think, um, even knowing how much of a ding in his first movie, like, first Rogue One trailer, really good trailer. Yeah. I was like, that yeah. was like, when that came out, that was like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I can say that probably, like, I think, like, yeah, like, we just look at, like, the trailers as, like, isolated, like, pieces of art, I guess. Like, yeah. Most of them, I think, are good, frozen aside. Um, <laughs> 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 that's root your day <laughs> that's root yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go home sad now because you showed me that sh- shock and display um but yeah no it's uh it's interesting like especially seeing like for all like because there is cases of like with rogue one like reshoots happened so it's like literally like plans change like from like when it dropped to when the movie came out or like mm. in other instances like where with like tangled where it's more like they were trying to like advertise like they weren't like they didn't have like as much faith in like the movie itself so like they tried to like advertise around it mm. like to, like try to like pick out anything like they could like to make it seem more marketable um when in when like yeah they didn't have the faith to market it on its own like real merits yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah uh, it's like yeah there's uh there's like a, a few different uh trailers uh especially i think older ones um that don't don't really like appeal but the films are absolutely like classics mm. uh for example i'm not a really big fan of the rocky trailer 
uh like the original um like it's it's very uh especially the first one it's kind of it like it shows like bits of the movie but i, I don't know it's like so I, no if you look up the original teaser it's like it's weirdly uh edited like the uh the music goes hype and then it goes low and then it's like a really weirdly edited one it, it's definitely because it was done uh a bit cheaper mm. than you know it was like kind of trying to finance it with a kind of different thing so it's like when you watch like something like that compared to something like the creed trailer or something like that it's how far we've come in terms of mm. able to market some stuff is uh really cool so Yes, like where they're like marketing the first Rocky, like almost like it was like some kind of like, like action sports movie, and like they weren't like regularly focusing on like the drama of the movie or anything. No, 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 they they were, but they, it was like, uh, they were focusing a bit, like they they showed exactly what it was going to be, but the way that they showed it was like very kind of, his name is Sylvester Stallone, he's the star of a new film called. Rocky. He's been compared to De Niro, Nicholson, and Brando, but he is Rocky. And like you know, it's just like random. Do they actually place. name drop them as well? Yeah. Oh wow! Like you don't see that happening nowadays. Yeah. Geez. Um. And like, yeah, they, you get clips of the movie. I don't know. It's just it's such a um. It's such a weird, not not weird, but like. Un- unsatisfying and then when you when you watch the film it's a lot better uh yeah they you know stuff like that it was very much in that era where oh uh, the, the names of actors would kind of sell the movies uh hmm. yeah it kind of goes back to what we were saying about the movie star even when you watch a trailer for first blood uh rambo uh it's like stallone is rambo it's like um the way those kind of stuff is American, they're trying to get it hyped up a little bit. Uh, whereas I think I prefer modern trailers, how they kind of get the emotion of the actual uh, story of what's actually at stake and things mm. like that. And they have these kind of uh, epic, uh, wonderful orchestra kind of uh, things, or if it's a uh, more kind of fun movie and they have like the hits and the boons and stuff like that uh i was watching the uh the leo trailer earlier and they had uh more than a feeling uh from uh by the band boston and it it was really well uh done i don't know just stuff like that kind of gets you hyped and uh you know i I find that uh much better for an approach like the the way they can edit and it just shows how far we've uh, common terms of uh, the artistic level of uh, marketing stuff, I guess. Yeah, no, like, they only focus more on, like, the contents of the movie nowadays, and I think as well, it's like, trailers themselves, I think, have become more of a... And this goes back to the reaction content. I think trailers themselves have become, like, more of, like, like, a moment of, like, hype for, like, film audiences. Like, back in the day, I don't... Uh, back in the day, like, yeah, sure, they would have still been, but it's, like, now, like like now like a good trailer can like go like crazy far and like and like i think like there's more incentive i think there's like a higher standard to trailers nowadays yeah um there, there was that which um uh the posters for the old movies are much better than uh the new posters i think yeah yeah but that I, I, can agree. I think we have better trailers now than we yeah do. the trade-off um, we don't really get many for like blockbusters and we don't get many illustrated posters nowadays yeah i wish those would make a comeback it's a shame yeah Yeah. and uh i i like the um you know in golden discs they have the suicide squad um notebook or something Mm. the picture of that poster why why is not the main poster of the movie that 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 art is cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then like you get the actual suicide squad poster it's just like you know a bunch of characters on it and mm. stuff like that it's i think like color. the suicide squad poster is actually like good example of some like good modern posters but definitely yeah. um 
I also definitely do have kind of an old school kind of feel to them as well. So it's yeah. um, I'd say like those are a good example of like modern products. Be like, yeah, I remember like the uh, the kind of like the art, the art they put out like for all like the Italian products and everything is like really like well done. Yeah. Um, the the one poster I really did not like was uh, the No Way Home one. Uh, well, yeah, just a picture of him on a car. And I, I, I don't know, like the Green Goblin in the background. And that, I think. Yeah, no. Okay, No Way Home is the thing. Is like, for like as good of a job they did with all the marketing, like the the Andrew Garfield interviews that were like coming out for Tick Tick Boom, like they tied that in, like for all the uh, the trailer hype that was like coming around. It's like, <laughs> and like how like how like how like exciting those were and they dropped like the one aspect like they really like I'm baffled like was so much worse was like the posters because like yeah there was the one with like there's the one with like Tommy Boy and he's like on like I think it's like yeah green, on, either on the car or like Green Goblin's glider or something and it's like yeah Doc Ock is like coming from like the front you see his tentacles and it's yeah, like you see Green it. Goblin like barely there in the background it's yeah, like it's like a PNG okay. I remember seeing that and like I was actually like convinced at the time it was like oh no see they edited out like other characters from this poster because it's like it's so bland like it has to be like there has to be something missing no that's just what it was meant to be yeah, like and I'm yeah. like oh that was t- ass that was ass to be honest um <laughs> I even like I said it to you know who and uh, I was like yo I don't like that and he was like it's fine and I was like what's good about it like explain how this is good like come on like there's nothing artistic it's just him on a car and then yeah you know, it's like like it's a it, scene in the film like we saw it in the trailer anyway mm-hmm. so like what the hell is you know what's I, so good about this bit like you know I it's think just there's a bit like the movie. there's another cover they have I think it's like one of the Blu-ray covers where it's just like it's one of Doctor Strange's portals. And it's like Spider Man like standing alongside Doctor Strange in the portal, and that's it. And it's like, I mean, they're, they're kind of like overselling how big, like how much you like Doctor Strange. And like he's in it a lot, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, Ned and like and, like Ned and MJ aren't in it. And it's like like none of the villains are. In it. It's like I've, that's another weird poster again, or like Blu Ray cover, whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah, my my it's favorite, making it look like it's yeah. like a buddy like buddy team up movie between the two of them, and yeah. it's like not. Yeah, no, my favorite one is uh, I think it's the one where it's just the back of him and uh it's like the city or something like that yeah no that's the best one yeah that that should be that should have been that should the be the main one main, that should have been the jaws type poster yeah. that that's the main one that's uh the best kind of uh one i remember like when they did like the re-release that the, the more fun stuff re-release they gave it a new poster and yeah. it's like it's typically one of them like floating heads type posters where it, but, yeah. like it gets every character in it so it's like it's very comprehensive it gets like every like named character nearly <laughs> it's like i don't want to say like i don't wanna say that was much better because like it also like runs that also kind of runs into the issue it looks it looks too crowded but it's like I mean, fuck it i'll take it over the first one for sure yeah. definitely <laughs> yeah <clears throat> um yeah and uh in terms of like marketing i think the mcu do a good job in terms of trailers mm. uh they, they do a really really good job uh oh yeah no no there was another thing speaking of misleading trailers have you seen ant man and the wasp quantum mania uh not as of yet it's still on my uh backlog okay. for mcu okay. stuff okay um what i will say is have have you seen the trailer at all any of the trailers uh yeah i saw the first two i think okay Did so um what I would recommend when when you see the film, now some people will kind of give out about it. I personally really love the film. I think it's really cool. I've seen it twice, uh, and I really like it. Um, I think it's really fun. Uh, it definitely kind of fits into. Just think of Ready Player One, Ra- Robert Rodriguez type, uh, kind of uh, fun stuff, but genuine heart in it. There's things things mm. like that. It's it's genuinely fun. It reminds me of Fire Street and the Invisibles and uh, uh kind of that kind of vibe but the, the goat Arthur and the Invisibles. A proud a proud comparison to Yeah, the no, no, there. that's that's what I think of it. And you know, just the kind of fun mm. type of vibe and like different things and Michelle Pfeiffer is there and Yeah Shelley, you know. Um But the trailer i will admit is a little misleading now i won't get too much into it but what they did they showed too much but they also showed things in a different kind of way that kind of didn't make it look like it was supposed to be this 
And yeah, they Just, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I'll say. Yeah, that 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 does make sense, I guess. Um, like, I know like Modok like wasn't in most of the marketing until it came out, and he's like a main character. That's like one thing I know. Yeah, I, I I'm not too worried about Modok. I wouldn't be worried about that. Uh, was it, was it things. Kang they showed too much of? I won't I won't get into it. Okay, but, okay. Uh, yeah, um, he is no. Don't worry, he is in it like a lot. Mm. He's not like uh, a ten minute thing. No, no, he is the main threat. But uh, what what they actually showed was um, kind of uh, that that wasn't. Uh, that's not what it should have been. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose we can like talk about like fun trailers, you know, when mm. they uh, have uh, different things like the announcement trailers, like the one for Toy Story 4 where they're all like jumping. Yeah. Uh, or the one for The Incredibles where he's like trying to suit up and uh, he's like trying to get the belt on and uh, his wife uh, is like calling him and stuff and then it comes up The Incredibles. Do you remember that trailer? I do, I do know that. That, yeah. was, that was a good trailer. And the Toy Story 4 trailer as well, I was uh, quite a big fan of. Uh, I, I love, I adore <laughs> the teaser trailer for the first Scooby-Doo. And they have the Batman kind of theme. And like, it's like, he will be cloaked in mystery. And like, Thank God. it's like, do, do, do. And like, it shows like Look, the two ears. And then like, looking like, looking oh, back yeah. on that now, crazy foreshadowing for like where James Gunn's career would go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Who? Me? Nah! <laughs> That's really cool. I don't know. I, I think it's really fun. I showed it to my dad, and uh, I was like, this is the new Batman trailer, and I started laughing when Scooby showed up. And, God. Like, he, he didn't laugh at all. But, I feel yeah. like that was a thing. That was also a thing I feel like more trailers did. Like, they'd, like, they'd like, make it look like it was going to be like one character was like going to be in it, and it's, like, it was going to be like, it was going to be like a film based on one property, and it's a film based on one property. I think like, I think the Simpsons movie had one of these where it's like it looks. Oh, they like, had a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, they had like I remember they had like one random one where it's like they had like the CGI bunny. Animal, yeah, like, yeah. Do 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 do. And, and that's like the Simpsons that's movie. Simpsons. And uh, the bunny's not breathing. <laughs> and I remember there was like another one. I think it was for the movie. It might have just been for the show even or a new, uh, new season. But uh, they had like the Superman logo show up, and it's like they playing like I think it might even be the Retro Downer theme. <laughs> Also featured in the Kangaroo Jack, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trailer. They couldn't get enough of that, and it's like that zooms out. She's like Homer sitting on the couch with like a super and she's like, oh, I just, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's probably like yeah. a bunch of other examples I can think of. Yeah, I feel like that was a weird mini trend that was going around for a while. Yeah, yeah. Can't remember the last time I seen that. Yeah. I mean, I guess now, like, since people like watch them on like YouTube, like they they know going in what the trailer is for, so it doesn't yeah. hit quite as hard. Yeah. No, after seeing that Frozen trailer, if that trailer editor got the job to edit Inside Out, the trailer for Inside Out, uh, I can only imagine what he would come up with, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, man. No, that would... They'd have, like... No, they'd have played, like... Again, like, going off of that played way too much into the comedy. I mean, I guess the first teaser did a little bit where it's like... yeah. You know, actually, I'll say that first Inside Out is a very good trailer as well. Like, it's just like it's just like a scene from the movie, but it's like they pick like such a good scene to like perfectly like advertise like everything about it. Yeah, yeah. Like you're like you get like you instantly like you get the concept uh, immediately. Like it shows up like it shows up a good bit of the humor. Like shows up like some of the like kind of like hints like some of, like the more family drama type of aspect of it. Um, like only like kind of misleading thing maybe is like it like overplays like how much like the two parents like are focused on in it but it's like i don't think that's i don't think that's that big of a problem yeah to be honest. yeah like, i got you i think like no i think that was like a good example like a very good first trailer yeah mm. uh I, I love the the one for kung fu panda 2 mm. i personally love that i think that's uh one of my favorite ones where it's uh paul and it's not a scene from the movie at all but i i just think it's really cool i remember seeing big mama's house three <laughs> the goat Big Mama's Absolute House Three, God tier cinematic masterpiece. Like Big why, why Mama's the... House Three, sweep. Big Mama's House Three. What was the title? Like Father, Like Son. Like Father, that, Like that's, Son. That's the one. That's the kind of banger ass subtitle you would expect from the Big yeah. Mama's House saga. Yeah, 
I remember like I was going in, I was there with my mm. cousin, I was there with my sister, my aunt, and some other. It was like a very gender kind of thing going on, but mm. you know, like whatever. Anyway, so I was there sitting down, and then I remember like seeing the DreamWorks logo, and like, oh. Oh, it's, then, it's, it's the Shrek people. I love the Shrek then, people. And then, like, oh, 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 oh. And then I'm like, mm. I see, like, the J Pat. I'm like, I am, like, I'm high. Mm. Like, I was like, it was like that kind of Star Wars moment, like, you know? And uh, it, it tells you kind of very, very little mm. about the kind of uh, thing of what they're actually doing. And, uh, you know, you just get, you get the vibe. Poe is back and you know it's just such a that's, those are the kind of things that they should be doing to advertise mm. their movies and stuff like that they should have uh different things like that it's, especially for um animated stuff it's like really really cool to kind of get the vibe of what they're actually going for um i will say though the Kung Fu Panda 2 trail like the trailer trailer like the the actual one like I think they're okay but they have the you know the Black Eyed Peas pump it song and stuff Uh, like that like it it was part of the time so I understand why it was like that but yeah Uh, better marketed than the third one in my opinion but Mm. yeah yeah uh is there any other trailers that are pretty decent, I suppose? Um, any other good trailers? God, there's plenty. Uh, the first, like, the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer, like, not not the trailer for Bohemian Rhapsody, that was also good, though, but, like, the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer they used for, like, the first Suicide Squad was, like, bro, when I saw that, like, I was, like, so hyped. Yeah, yeah, no. That I, was, like, such a well-edited yeah. trailer. That was a really well edited trailer. Yeah. Like I watched like the new Rockstar's breakdown of like everything going on, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is like art right here!" Like this trailer, I'm like that's like no, I still I still think that's definitely a good trailer though. Uh, very well made. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree. <laughs> uh, I think they did a really good job with that. Whoever mm-hmm. kind of came up with that sort of thing, uh, I wish it was. Um, the only thing about that trailer is uh, what happened because. Apparently, someone edited that trailer, and they saw that how well that did, so they decided to change. Yeah, because uh, you know they they were changing the air cut and stuff. Mm. And uh, apparently, the first teaser for the air cut is more accurate to how that cut was gonna go. Yeah, it was more dramatic. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know if it was necessarily the guy who. Uh, or gal who edited it was the that. same studio that got brought in okay i i don't know if they had like anything to do with like how they were gonna reshoot it and stuff like that i don't know if they were directly responsible for that but um yeah i, I wish they like kind of they get they got if, if that's the case uh i wish they kind of got the job to do it for I don't know Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that instead of mm. uh, like it's still a really cool trailer but still yeah um, you know it, it kind of goes with tone and stuff like that and uh, the way that it was supposed to be but I suppose they like did make the movie that way so it's kind of eh you know I don't know it's it's an interesting kind of rabbit hole you can kind of go down but yeah have you ever seen the trailer for Psycho? Oh, the yeah. Um, is that the one where like Alfred Hitchcock? He just goes around the set. Yeah. And, like he explains how it's movie. Yeah, that's like, it's unique. I'll definitely say that much. It's definitely yeah. unique. Um. Yeah, it's like he gives away like actual like big parts of the movie as well, which is like you think would be like a major issue, but it's like, it it kind of works. Yeah. Despite that, like I think it's um yeah. very intriguing anyway. Yeah. And, like, I know, like, a big thing, like, this kind of goes against, like, the fact, like, he's explaining parts of the plot, but it's, like, I, of course, like, a big thing is, like, he didn't want people to, like, know what the movie was, like, about going in. Like, he wanted, like, so much of it to be a surprise. So, it's, like, I guess, like, that also kind of makes sense. Like, I mean, yeah, so I feel like the one second you see at the end in, like, the shower scene, like, there's, yeah, no footage from the movie. It's just, like, him walking around the sets. Um, no, I, I like it. I like it, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like its approach. 
yeah. I remember um, one of like probably one of like the best trailers I think I saw was I think um. I said like the Dark Knight Rises, like the trailers for that oh, look like really yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good one. It's like the, the piano and stuff like that, yeah. and then uh, football field. Yeah, that yeah, was the football really field scene, which is like not a huge part of the movie, but well, like, the way they did the trailer was so cool. It was yeah. like it's like kind of like almost like played off as like kind of a jokey moment, like in the movie, but it's like in the trailer that was like the one image that like stuck with me more than anything. Yeah, and, like that looked mad when I saw that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it was a really really well done trailer. Uh, I also loved the one for um, Watchmen. Yeah, Watchmen's yeah. a really good trailer. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, did a, they did a really good job with that. Um, also, the first teaser for Batman v Superman. That was really yeah. cool. I like that one. A lot of, a lot of good trailers. Uh, Force Awakens trailer. Teaser 2. Oh, Te- yeah. Teaser trailer. Two, teaser 2. Chewie, we're home. That one. Yeah. That was incredible. No, that was like I feel like with with the hype that was there for the Force Awakens, they could have dropped like literally anything and it would like be this like huge deal, but it's like those are honestly like those are iconic, the first like Force Awakens trailers. Like of course, yeah, like, as I said, they'd be iconic no matter what, because like so many people like there are so many eyes on it, but it's just nah, they they did. They did a bang up job with like all the marketing for that. I actually that kind of ties into like maybe like the second one was like misleading because like it had like Luke's narration and Luke's not a huge fan of the movie like in terms of screen time anyway but even then I don't mind that to be honest yeah I, I didn't mind that either. I didn't mind it some people are saying like uh, the trailers almost show what the movie should have been I guess mm. uh, well, like it's but... easy to say that because like they were vague on like what the plot points and everything were gonna be yeah so it's like all you have to go off of is just like a general like tone and like some imagery so it's like it's it's easy to say like oh yeah this is what it should have been but it's like what it should have been like that's not really like well defined on yeah. its own i don't yeah. think yeah i got i got i got you but yeah that was that was a really cool one mm. yeah this is like a tangent there's like a tangent here but we're going to have like modern trailers and all that like boom boom kind kind of music and everything. Yeah, I don't get. I don't know what what trailer started this trend. But I I said before to you, and I think this is the first time I mentioned here. Like, what is with like the weird trend now of like trailers that like use like an overly dramatic like like epic quote unquote remix of like a pop song for like their main soundtrack? It's like why is that everywhere? I have a guilty pleasure for that. I, I yeah, like some of them like are good. It. Like um, one I did actually like was for House of Gucci. Like they did, like they did that for. A oh Glass. yeah, and oh, actually, I love that one. I actually no, that, that, that's definitely one. I like I actually really like that version of like Heart of Glass. I think yeah. like that works really well. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. But it's um, no, there was like one. There was like, I was like in the air tonight. They did like a, like an epic version of that for like the Halo show, and it's like what I what is the correlation there? That's such a random like one like I know they did like Take on Me for the Last of Us show as well but like that one like like Take on Me like is they play that in the game so it's like that one makes sense I guess but it's like yeah God there's like I think I want to say like what's going on they play that in the oh Resident, okay yeah the that, that's Evil? where the, that's I think it was that yeah uh, Resident Evil yeah yeah okay now that one okay yeah I could I could take that one away like jeez <laughs> I think no it was I showed it to you didn't I? I you was did like, yeah I was like uh, <laughs> I, I like the imagery I like the way it's kind of going but uh, this uh, song is like really taking me out um, and like I, I showed it to you really like, yeah it's like Christ. was it just like <laughs> was it just like the fact there was like hey yeah 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 it's like it's like Oh well, that's like close enough to screaming, so like it, it fits in like a horror scene. Like let's put it in. It's like I, what were what were they cooking? Zombies around. What's going on? Exactly, exactly. Perfect fit. <laughs> oh man. Uh oh no, the one of the horses. I'd love to change the world in the Terminator Genesis one. Oh uh, yeah, that, that did not fit at all. I yeah no, uh, and they uh they only had that song a year prior in the dawn of the planet of the apes trailer also starring jason clark Mm. so that it just completely it was just a bit weird uh 
it kind of suited it there though uh in hmm. the apes movie but not in the terminator one it like probably fits that one better than like terminator yeah, yeah. um well what are your thoughts on the they did it with the creator they had the aerosmith song i thought it was pretty good there actually yeah, yeah. that 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 it didn't take me out cool. of it yeah no that remix is pretty cool uh yeah hmm I'm trying to think of any other one like i don't mind it but mm. sometimes especially for resident evil uh they, they should have just played orchestra <laughs> mm. or just maybe like quiet somber ambient stone and then go back to kind of more oh no the worst one is terminator dark fate now that movie i don't like it but that first teaser what was that music <laughs> do you remember to, I'm, i don't think i do remember uh, i'll do an impression of it you'll remember I'm going hunting. I'm oh, going to kill someone. Oh wait! Oh god! I think I, I do remember that. Going yeah. Hunting. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually coming back to me. That was fucking. <laughs> what the fuck? I was there watching it. Like, uh, what? Oh fucking hell, man! Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that was a strange, strange decision. Yeah, no. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in terms of um, Tangled, uh, especially that one there, that, that Trouble song kind of fit in. I thought that was kind of cool. It did, I think, a bit. Yeah, yeah. and like the the... The music for that was kind of cool. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, no, it's like, I think that was like, uh, definitely like where some of like the Shrek vibes were coming from. Cause like when that played, like, specifically, like what I was associating that with my head, it was like the immigrant song scene, like Shrek the Third kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Like, that's yeah. like, again, like, that's just like kind of like the connection my brain made, like, when yeah, that played. So yeah, it was like, I think that's, that's where that's I was fair. getting the idea from. Yeah. But like, no, I think, I, I don't think it's like, like, I think like the biggest issue, yeah, is just like that's like 80% Flynn Rider yeah yeah like no i don't i don't think that was like uh no i think that 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 did fit pretty decently yeah yeah, yeah i recently just got uh after ray of tangles mm, <laughs> so epic. yeah it was like <clears throat> i think it's uh like i think it i don't know if it's the 3d one but it has mm. like some other kind of stuff on it i just i don't know mm. i i hadn't seen the movie in like a couple of years and I saw it in like a charity shop for really cheap, so I just got it up and uh, yeah, I I loved that film since I talk so much about it, but yeah, hmm. it's uh it's really cool and uh you know just kind of add it uh, to the lore of like those trails. Like I suppose like it's um it, it's kind of good in a way to kind of watch a trailer and kind of say that doesn't look great, and then when you watch you watch the film it turns out and it surprises you but mm. the job of a trailer is to kind of get you hyped uh and uh some of these stuff mo- the majority actually do get you hyped i will say mm. that like majority of them do but there's a vast minority like that frozen one that would not kind of mm. suit well I know uh, Edge of Tomorrow is a big example. Like a lot of people, Edge like, of Tomorrow, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people like think like the trailer like made it look way too generic and like didn't actually sell the strengths of the movie. And like a lot of people like would argue like that's why like it didn't like do too too well at the box office. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just because like, and again, that's like that. There is the side of it where it's like, yeah, most of the films we've gone over today like did well, but it's like there's a side of it where it's like a bad trailer like can uh, can definitely uh, can definitely like tank a movie's performance. And uh, yeah, a lot of people would say uh, Edge of Tomorrow is a pretty good example of that. Mm-hmm. so i suppose uh we could like leave some final thoughts how long do we have yeah we have like 10 minutes i suppose yeah. uh <clears throat> any uh final thoughts that you have um you know well uh to guess i'll say like to this day still still uh still uh Still not, still not over Kangaroo Jack fully. 
Like, you know, like the, the, the wounds have healed, but there are still scars from uh, my memories of that. Yeah, and uh, any, any wounds that have he- healed uh, have now been scarred by me from showing you <laughs> that Frozen trailer. Yeah, those like reopened the scars. That that didn't leave you frozen, that boiled you yeah. alive almost. Yo, frozen, more like hot shit. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. <coughs> yeah it, um god yeah it's hopefully we don't get another one of those kind of trailers that kind of looks like yeah of that um, yeah hopefully not yeah i'm very interested though uh are there any other uh sort of uh trailers out there that like there's so many animated movies out there that i haven't seen so it'll be interesting after growing up with it like certain characters that have meant a lot to you and stuff like that and like the stories and stuff that you probably saw and then like years later that you watch like a trailer or something like that Mm. um i'm half tempted to kind of go down the rabbit hole and like watch a few like maybe surfs up or open Mm. season or something just to see what yeah no i feel like surfs up as well that'd be like a hard film to market i think yeah to a younger audience Mm-mm. yeah but, you know that's like that's an interesting idea because like maybe this is like maybe this is just my experience talking but it's like when i was younger again like i wasn't paying too too much attention to uh to like the rollouts of films yeah in the past yeah. like i'd see a trailer at the cinema and like then i'd see the ads on tv when it came out and it's like that'd be my experience but it's like yeah there's a lot of like yeah there's a lot of like childhood films that like i, I didn't like see any marketing for until i came out like there's of course like even more like childhood films like i didn't even like see them until like years after they came out anyway yeah so it's like yeah there's like a lot of this like i wasn't there for mm. that would be interesting to dive into yeah i wonder how mm. they marketed the original lion king actually like trying to think yeah yeah i think that probably wouldn't have been too hard because like this is like this is like disney renaissance era so i feel like and i feel like yeah they probably i imagine they probably would have stuck mostly to like the, the young simba part of the movie yeah I would like say timon so. and pumbaa there I, I imagine like i can't imagine like uh the latter half of the movie was like yeah. focused on too too much yeah yeah probably a lot from james earl jones i'd imagine probably maybe, and maybe scar as well and then like mm. fights with him and scar they probably didn't show mufasa's death that'd be a bit weird i uh, well that'd be a major spoiler as well yeah uh yeah yeah uh oh yeah it just uh while we just while we're wrapping up do you remember the first original teaser for the first star wars just call it star wars i feel like i had to have seen it at some point in space this may be all happening right now (laughs) and like like, yeah it's like a bunch of like random clips and it's uh yeah it's it's pretty wild how far we've kind of come uh you know how that Mm all started it all and now we're here with the disney era of star wars and things like that yeah there would have been no rogue one shenanigans back in the 70s <laughs> there's a there is like one other trailer you showed me recently i forget the name of the movie but it's like one of stallone's first movies <laughs> and it's yeah you know the one i'm talking about i, I forget what the trailer is but it's like they had like the lords of flatbush yeah. the lords of flatbush yeah that was such that was no that was a good trailer like, i was like i was hyped for that they had like for those who don't know like, basically they have like they have someone like singing the entire plot of the movie like over like clips of it and like introducing like the cast in song and everything and it's like it's actually like <laughs> it made me want to see it to be honest like, guys was, like, play in the pool <laughs> like, guys was, like, skip in school like, like if it was like more normal like i feel like it probably would like wouldn't be that interesting but it's like that's that like that sold me <laughs> honestly like props for creativity for the team who marketed that yeah we need to like god imagine like imagine like they still did marketing like that like imagine I, no, I was saying to you, like they should have uh, for the Barbie movie. They should have got to Elipa. They should have got to Elipa to sing like what's happening on screen. <laughs> like um, we'll we'll write it in poetry and then like give it yeah. to her and she'll sing. It. Yeah, we'll we'll send it to our our good friend of the channel, Dua Lipa. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I know she's watching this, of course. Oh, she's she's definitely listening. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Wait, shout out to you. Uh, 
uh you're welcome on the podcast anytime i know you're busy but uh yeah Mm. Uh, she'll call us she will she will but uh yeah no um musical trailers need to bring those back Uh, speaking of that barbie trailer the way that was edited with Mm. the hyped up music and stuff like that and uh be your own kind of yeah that was a really good trailer the way that was edited with like the different kind of tones of it Mm. that was perfect uh and it hit the kind of emotional themes uh that they were going to go for Mm. but they marketed it in such a way that it felt still satisfying to what the actual movie was yeah and it was probably a perfect trailer for that type of movie in my opinion yeah, no, especially because, like, they were going, like, mainly with, like, teasers up to that point. Like, they did, like, two or... Yeah, like, they did, like, two teasers, and, like, a lot of people were, like, wondering, like, when's the full trailer coming out by that point? Yeah. But it's, like, yeah, when they dropped that, that was, like... Like, hype had been, like, building up for the movie already. Like, this is, like, already so talked about, and I feel like even that where it was at that trailer, like, like really, like, just, like, blew it up so much. Like, the fucking, like, yeah, like, uh, with Barbie and Ken, like, getting, like, their headshots... Like, I remember, like, bro, like, every, like, artist, uh, like, on Twitter was, like, making, like, a redraw of that with, like, their favorite, like, fictional couples and everything, their favorite ships, and it was, like, like, that was, like, it, that was, like, a huge thing, and it's, like, it, it captured, like, the tone perfectly, like, and I don't think it gave away too, too much of the plot either, no, like, yeah. Uh, no, it didn't. It like, just... the Martha Dar relationship, you don't really get that from the trailer, but it's, like, I kind of like that being more of a surprise. Yeah, it is, release. yeah, yeah. Because it's like that's something like you wouldn't expect it to be about anyway. So it's like I kind of I appreciate that like that was uh, left more of a surprise. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. One more trailer we got to talk about. Okay. Morbius. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh my god. The the Morbius. Okay. The, the Mecha Morbius. Oh my god. Um. So for people that don't know, Morbius was a film starring Jared Leto, and he plays a vampire, a vampire a superhero, uh, vigil anti, uh, not really a superhero, kind of uh, anti-hero, a little anti-hero, bit of yeah. a villain. Uh, maybe one of the Sinister Six if they make it that far. Mm. Uh, go see our film, please. That's what they were saying, and basically. They have uh, a lot of references to uh, pretty much every Spider-Man um, in the trailer. Like they have like uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, like the an art mural of him. They have uh, like some stuff with the Amazing Spider-Man stuff, and then they have MCU things in there too. It's Mister uh, Keaton. Keaton, and they also have like. Uh, you know, there's like other like Easter eggs and things like that, like on one of the newspapers or something like that. But, uh, yeah, no, no, there's so much stuff, and then you hear things about reshoots. Michael Keaton's doing reshoot. You're like, oh, reshooting, okay. And then like you watch the entire film, Michael Keaton's not in it at all, and then you get to the post credit scene. And the the footage of Michael that was in the very first trailer isn't in the movie whatsoever. And, yeah, he's barely, like, you know? And uh, you're just like, what? What? Uh, what? You know? And, uh, yeah, it's just... You, you lie. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> I've heard, like, a rumor... I forget, like, who it came from, and I don't know if I believe it, but, like, I feel like mentioning it for, like, because it is relevant, that they were going to have Andrew Garfield in the movie, and, like, that's why they put all the Spider-Man stuff in the trailer, but it's, like, at some point, like, he dropped out of it, and that's why they took it out in the final release. Now, I don't know that for sure, because it's, like, there was reshoots, but also, like, the movie, like, got delayed, like, a load, like, load times, like, obviously, like, for COVID and everything. It was meant to come out in 2020, uh, which I forget, but it's, yeah... Uh, so I, 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 I feel like, yeah, they probably weren't actually planning to put Andrew in it because like they'd have had to like, I mean, if they were going to do it, like I can imagine like maybe put him in like where Michael Keaton was the first one, just like throwing him in an after credit scene. But like, yeah, I don't personally, I don't personally believe that's what they were going for, but it is interesting to think about. Like yeah, imagine if that yeah. did end up being like his comeback as Spider-Man and not No Way Home, like fucking hell. Oh uh, yeah, that would have been, uh, yeah. No, he, he, he would not have deserved that. Um. And another thing is like, uh, can I just say as a random point, 
when Michael Keaton first shows up in the Morbius trailer and it's like his line coming in is like, yo, what's up, Doc? And I just say, that's a terrible line. <laughs> like, I think like him saying, yo, what's up, Doc? That's like, I feel like he had like one, that like two seconds to like improvise a line for that. And that's like all he come up with. It's just like, wow, that's such a weird line to like throw in like for what's supposed to be like a hype moment. And also another Morbius related thing that got taken out. That one scene where he's like grabbing the guy and he's like, oh, oh yeah, I am Ven- Venom. Yeah. This yeah. guy Dr. Michael Morbius. Yeah, that was funny in the trailer. And then you watch the movie and it's like, I am Venom. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's, it. You're just it's like, like, what? <laughs> it's like, literally, it's like. You cut the joke. You ruined the see, joke. It's not even that they cut the joke. They cut literally, they cut the punchline. Like the joke, the setup for the joke <laughs> is still in there. So it's just confusing. Like, he's like, I am Venom. It's like, d- does Venom exist here? <laughs> Do we even know yet? It's like, they never mentioned him before. It's like, it doesn't even work in the scene. Like, it just comes out of nowhere. It's like, 